everyone, it's Froggy, and once again it is time for an ending review. This time we're doing Jesus. So, in order to get his true ending, we need to make sure that we don't have any hearts with any of the other guys. He values art most of all, so you're going to want to make sure that you keep that at number one, as high as you can possibly get it. But you're still also going to want to get femininity and beauty almost as high as art. He does value them all, it's just art is definitely above the others. Um, the best places that you can catch him around the apartment is if you unlock infomercials, cooking, and playing dress up in your room. And definitely you're going to want to buy the bikini as soon as you can afford it. It's going to help. Okay. So, so after meeting up with the wizard and finding out that the game is going to be ending in about a month, we do get a cutscene where Jizu and Heejung make a promise to one each to one another to be happy and he basically like wants her to just follow her dreams and do what it is that she treasures most which of course he means art and he's talking like he's gonna be leaving soon and everything and she's a little confused about it so he makes a promise to her that he, no matter what happens, is going to find her. And doesn't matter who she's with or anything like that, he's going to take her back. And he gives her his necklace. This is the necklace that his sister gave him. And she's, you know, she's really touched that he would want to go that far. So she touches the necklace whenever she starts feeling lonely. It's very sweet. The day before the game ends, Jizu gets to meet with the wizard again, and he's willing to grant the favor, but at a steep price. He needs a part of Jizu's memory. And that's where the scene ends. It's super quick, and they don't actually tell you what memories it is. You could take a guess, but we don't see... Uh, he doesn't actually say it in the cutscene what memories it is that he wants, but Jizu says beforehand, like, I am willing to pay whatever price. I just want to be here for her. And then we get the cutscene on Jizu's last night. So he Jung goes to her room, and Jizu is in the doorway, and he looks really sad, and he asks to spend the night with her. And she gets all jumpy, of course, but she does eventually give in, saying that he can sleep on the floor. So he comes into the room, closes the door, and turns off the light, which of course surprises her. And then he comes and picks her up and plops her on the bed. And she's like, what are you doing? I didn't say you could spend the night in my bed, and blah, 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 blah. But then he just stops her by saying, like, do you remember the night that I first became a human? And she starts remembering it fondly and how... He first became a human right there on her bed, and immediately he was considerate of her feelings, saw that she was nervous, and, you know, transformed into a cat again, and all that stuff. So they remembered that fondly, and... <sighs> Jizu, um... You know, he tells her she's cute and everything, and she gets really embarrassed and starts blushing, and he pulls her into him and starts hugging her tightly and then he promises that he's gonna find her and she doesn't understand what that means she feels like he's gonna be leaving her soon and that this isn't the first time that he's acted that way so she's a little concerned but she ends up hugging him tightly and they both pass out when he jung wakes up jesus's gone she leaves her room and finds that the animals are in her living room, confused and without their animal ears. Except for Gion. For some reason, he's not there. I don't know. I'm not sure where he is. Uh, so she's, of course, scared that they don't remember her, and then realizes that she can't find Jizu anywhere, and she goes running all over town trying to find him. And she doesn't, of course. And she ends up back at the park and sits on the bench and starts crying, and she eventually cries herself to sleep. And that's when she comes face to face with the wizard. That wizard. Mm -mm. So after a bit of conversation, she does figure out who the wizard is and calls him out. And he's 
impressed that she figured out who he is, and he explains the game to her, and that he created the game so that way he could watch her feel love and despair, and she calls him crazy, rightfully so. But since she can see the wizard, that means that she's got a desperate wish, which is for Jizu to be given back to her. And then the wizard doesn't aside. We get a little soliloquy with the wizard where he's like, I want to fulfill her wish because finally she has a wish so desperate that she's able to see me, but I can't fulfill it because Jizu's already made that wish and that wish has already been fulfilled, so he's already in the human world. But he decides that he's not going to tell her that and he's going to basically lead her on because as long as he doesn't tell her, she will continue having this desperate wish, which means that every night in her dreams, she'll be face to face with the wizard and he can show her how much he loves her and introduce her to his twisted form of love. Uh... Anyways, we get the last cutscene. And this is after Lily's been brought to the human world. And Jizu's, of course, lost his memories of Heejung, as we've expected. And they are walking around, and Lily sees someone wearing her necklace. And she tells Jizu that. And she says, yeah, it's the necklace that you said you lost. You couldn't, you don't remember where you put it. And he says, well, why would a girl have it? Obviously, I wouldn't give something precious to her. Are you sure it's not a different one? And she said, no. I made this myself, there's nothing else like it out there, I know that that's mine. And you said you can't remember what happened, so maybe you gave it to her. And he's like, well, why would I do that? And she was like, well, maybe you fell in love with her or something. And he was like, huh, yeah, right. And she's like, well, think about it. I mean, you, we've been here for three years now, so they dropped the bomb. It's been three years since all of this happened. And she says, you know, in these three years, you have never once had a girlfriend. And he's just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. So she sees her go into an art gallery. And she's like, well, I saw her go this way. I want to go into the art gallery. Let's see if we can go find her. So they decide to go into the art gallery. And on, there's a big sign that says um, that this is an art exhibit for an up-and-coming talented artist named Hee Jung Kim. So that's great because we get to find out that she actually went on and became an artist, which is amazing. And he's trying to think about, you know, where this girl could be and about what happened, but he still can't remember it. The only thing that he can remember is the name Jizu, but he doesn't know whose name it was or what it means. So anyway, so they go into the art exhibit and they decide to split up and Jizu is... We don't actually find out, I think, what Jizu's actual name is. I don't remember it once being said in any of the CGs. I've never heard Lily call him that, so I'm not 100% sure what it is. It might be out there online somewhere. Anyways, so he's trying to find the girl with the necklace, and he ends up coming upon this picture of a dandelion with its spores going out, like its seeds going out into the wind. So attached to this painting is a letter to Jizu. Basically, it says how much she cherished the memories that she made with her black cat, both the good and the bad. And she wants him to be happy and wants them both to be able to fulfill their promise. So he's going to be, she wants him to be happy and she's going to find a way for her to be happy. And she hopes that one day they'll meet again so that way she can say all the things to him that she never really got the chance to say. It's essentially a goodbye letter. And then right at the last second, after he reads that, he remembers her. And he remembers the promise that he made to her that one day he's going to find her and make her his again. And then that's where it ends. It's beautiful. It really is. I'm a little salty, of course, that they didn't actually meet up. But they're both in the same building right now. So that means that they're going to. Which is great. This is as... I mean, he's a lot closer to finding her than Jiwoo was to finding Hee Jung. And since she didn't make a wish, that means that her memories of him obviously are intact considering she made this painting and wrote a letter to him. So that's good. They'll recognize each other when they see each other and that's beautiful. All right, so let's start talking about the bad ending. For this ending, you're going to want beauty at level 10 
and you're going to want art at level eight by the end of October. By this point, you're also going to want to make sure that you have a heart with both Jizu and Jihei. And then starting in November, just go back to earning hearts with Jizu. And then this whole bad ending is going to kick off on November 24th. So that first CG is a, or not CG, but the first cutscene I should say is Hee Jung on her way home from school. And she meets up with Jihei coming home from doing some grocery shopping. And they talk a little bit, but she remarks that talking to him is kind of dull. And it doesn't really go anywhere. So once they come back inside, Jizu sees them coming in together, and of course he's pissed off. So Jihei quickly goes into the kitchen, and Jizu faces Heejung, and starts getting really up in her grill about it. And she tells him what happened, and then she just says, like, I don't want to talk about this anymore, I'm tired, I'm going to my room. But of course he follows her. And he gets angry and demands to know if she likes him or not. And at this point, she lets slip that she knows that he's obsessed with her and she doesn't like him in that way, but she can't also deny her feelings because she doesn't want to hurt him. And she does have feelings for him. So she does say that she likes him and he gets really possessive of her and she's like, this isn't really what I want, but he seems so relieved that I don't want to tell him otherwise. All kinds of red flags here. And she's an idiot for even going along with this and not making her true feelings known, because so far she's just leading them on. Um, so after this, we get a cutscene where, cut, cutscene? Cutscene, my goodness, I cannot talk today. Where uh, Jizu asked Heejung not to go to cram school. Uh, she feels like he's monitoring her all the time and hates it when he talk when she talks to others, including the other animals, and she feels like really weird and a little scared of him and she also he also seems to think that she's constantly just going out so he, uh she can meet other guys so which of course isn't true so anyways he's basically scaring her and it's understandable uh after this we start traveling down this bad route you're gonna notice that jisoo becomes more and more obsessed with her and you really start getting to see his yandere nature coming out. And it's really creepy. So at this point, like, no matter where you go in your apartment, Jizu is there. And you can't go anywhere near anyone else. You can't even be alone. He's just anywhere you go. It's really creepy. So at one point, he picks you up from school. And you, like, you're just outside the gates. You're talking to HeJ, because of course he's your school friend. But it's very obvious that Jizu does not like HeJ. He thinks he's like trafficking chickens and stuff because his family runs a restaurant. He's like, I don't like this guy and blah, 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 blah. It's really stupid. Um, anyway, so as soon as like HeJ sees Jizu, he bolts for it. <laughs> and Jizu comes up, grabs her hand and forcefully walks away from the school with her. And he tells you not to go to school anymore. And of course, he Jung fights back because, you know, she needs to go to school, even though she doesn't want to go to school and she doesn't want to be doing this because she'd rather be doing art. And he picks up on that and he's like, well, why would you want to go and do something that you don't even want to do? And she's like, well, I have to. I want to get a good job. And he's like, well, you don't need one. You can rely on me. But she's like, no, I want to go to school. How can you not say it? How could you say things like this? Anyways, he's not happy that you're fighting back. So when you get home, uh, he says that he's bought you some orange juice. And you tell him that you don't want any. But he tells you that you need to drink it. It's really good. Go wait in your room. He's going to bring you some. And she's like, okay. So she goes to her room and she starts setting herself up. You know, putting her books down. She puts her phone on her bed and all the stuff. And Jizu comes in and is really quick to interrogate her wh about why her phone's on the bed. Which, of course, she says, like, well, my alarm is on my phone. It makes it really easy to hear. And then I can really quickly check the time in the morning to make sure, like, I'm getting up on time. And he's like, right. Okay, well, here's this orange juice, so drink it. And she's like, well, put it down on the desk and I'll drink it later when I'm studying. He's like, no, 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 you're going to drink it now. It's really good. I just had some. You should have it now. And she's like, okay, I don't really want to, but sure. So she drinks it and she passes out because, you know, of course, he's drugged it. So when she wakes up, it's nighttime. And she's got a pounding headache and she's confused because she doesn't understand how she fell asleep. 
and he gives her some water because she's saying like, oh, I'm, I'm really thirsty and I need to get all this stuff done. But he's like, okay, well, here's some water. And she's like, thank you. And then again, her vision gets foggy and because of course the water was drugged and she realizes that she's being drugged and tries to accuse him of it. And his response is, I told you not to go to school. So she passes out. She wakes up to her phone ringing and it's HeJ, and he is worried sick about her because she's been missing school for the last several days. And she's like, what do you mean several days? I've been missing school. And she's freaking out and she's about to tell him what's going on, but she's trying to figure out how to explain it. But before she can say anything, Jizu is really quick, comes in, grabs her phone, breaks it in his fist, and... She's obviously terrified. He's just like, you need to be a good girl. You're not going to school anymore. And if you're good, I'll even take you for a walk today. So he's essentially holding her hostage. And that's where it ends. Nope. I do not like Yandere's. Not at all. Jizu and his tree route? I'm good with that. You know, it's, it's sweet. He's still a little much, a little creepy. But like, I get it, you know? Like even here, like... Obviously what he's doing is completely wrong. I understand the desperation because he wants to win the game because he wants to cure his sister. But this is not the way to do it, okay? At least when he, in the, in the true route, like he fell in love with her and that was good and you still can't get any hearts with anybody else because he's too damn insecure and is still very possessive of her, but like, at least it's a little more healthy, I guess. This is obviously not. You know, he's drugging her. He's not gonna win her love this way at all. In fact, she's just terrified of him. And I don't know, like I don't know how, when it comes to the bad endings, I'm not 100% sure how it works with the game because if nobody wins the love within like a year, do they get sent home? Or does the wizard just let the person who got closest to you stick around and, you know, suck? I'm not sure. Uh, or does everybody lose their memories? I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know. But, yeah. Either way, I, I the hell no to this. Mm-mm, mm-mm. But in all, again, on Jesus' true route, I did quite like him. Um, not as much as I liked Jiwoo. I'll say that, but, you know, I liked him a lot. He was, he was all right and pretty cute at times. <laughs> and I don't know, he's just a big dumb and I'm okay with that. As long as he doesn't get creepy obsessive. Anyways, um, so I can't remember who the next route is supposed to be. So I guess you're just gonna have to find out tomorrow whose route's coming up next. I've got it all written down somewhere, but I don't have it on me. So either way, you guys are gonna find out uh, tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you wanna see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.